Uh, welcome to today's webinar um, and today I want to show you how to quickly get started with the Atmel SEM V7 family and ARMS tool solution for software development around that family and also give you a quick hands-on on how to create a project that runs on an uh, Atmel evaluation platform. So let's get started with a quick overview of what the Atmel SAM V series um, overall is. Um, it's Atmel's latest addition to their Cortex M based um, microcontroller families, and it's based on an ARM Cortex M7 microcontroller core um, and is clocked up to 300 megahertz. That's um, up till now the fastest Cortex M microcontrollers available in the market and it comes with plenty of RAM and um, ROM options up to 384 kilobytes of RAM, two megabyte of on-chip flash um, and um, various um, other options like um, cache, um, data cache, instruction cache and a configurable tightly coupled memory. I'll um, give some details on that in the next slide as it is Cortex M7 specific options. Also, as a unique point, you'll get a CMOS camera interface and um, already from today on, you have um, the explained ultra board available, which is a um, quite low cost entry level evaluation board with, with very powerful options like an ethernet connector. you got audio options on board. you got many memory options. Um, you have an onboard USB debug interface and USB from the device and also you will find an ETM trace connector that allows you instruction trace if you, for example, have a U-Link Pro at hand. So let's have a look at the ARM Cortex-M7, which was introduced earlier this year and is ARM's latest Cortex-M core, so a specific microcontroller core. Um, what's specifically new is a very new architecture inside for um, far higher performance. It has a six-stage dual-issue pipeline. Um, if you look onto the, um, onto the benchmark I have on the slide on the lower right, you can see at same core clock, it is roughly 30% faster than a Cortex-M3 or M4 core. Also, it adds um, double precision floating point options compared to M4, which only had single precision floating point. It now adds newly data and instruction caches, which allows it also to be produced in far higher clock um, configurations than M3 or M4 without caching have been. And um, it introduces tightly coupled memory, which is memory that is um, um, very low latency directly attached to the core to prevent um, latency um, introduced by caching um, if you use memory on external buses. So you can use that for interrupts, which need to have high, highly uh, predictable response times, use tightly coupled memory. Uh, in addition to that, it offers um, error checking and correcting mechanisms and um, safety documentation to ease the certification process for safety, uh, functional safety um, related applications. Let's continue to the software stack we are going to um, use today in the hands-on part. And there's also um, a diagram that shows you how um, the software stack, the typical software stack in ARM's MDK ARM for the Atmel SAM V7 looks like. So your application code will get access to standardized middleware. Um, today we'll be using MDK professional middleware. Um, you will find generic component interfaces um, in the board support packages um, that allow you access to analog digital converters or simple access to LEDs, push buttons, and so on. Um, but you might also find device-specific middleware like motor control libraries and so on. That software is um, getting access to CMS's driver layer, which is a standardized um, gateway to the communication peripherals on the microcontroller and standardizes around um, standardizes drivers around Ethernet, USB, um, memory card interfaces, and so on. Besides that, you'll also find the Atmel Software Framework hardware abstraction layer, which is a um, 
the device driver library supplied by Atmel. And both need to be pin and clock configured. Most of that is done in the so-called RTE device header file. You will also see that in Microvision in, in action in a minute. And it's a very simple way um, ARM provides in MDK ARM to configure the I.O. you're going to use for various peripherals. The example I'm uh, planning to build is running on the um, before mentioned board on the SEM V7 T1 uh, explained ultra board, which um, we will be connecting to the debug USB part for flash programming and debugging. Uh, it uses the CMC step standard to connect. And we will be using an ethernet connection to network up our board and then be running a web server on the microcontroller, which runs from a SD memory card with a FAT file system. So this is another middleware component we are going to use is a file system um, that you know, gives the web server component using our IPv4 TCP IP stack to read files from there and serve up to a browser over the network. So let's go to the fun part and start with a small live demonstration. First of all, I'm going to start Microvision, the IDE of MDK ARM. That just takes a second until I share it with you and you should see it in should now have a full screen view of Microvision. And before we start with that, um, I'll show you how the device support is coming into MDK ARM. And for that, I'm going to show you the pack installer, which I just launched from the toolbar. And the pack installer is a very convenient tool that installs additional software and device um, support into MDK ARM. And since I already have a board at my desk, it's best to go to the boards tab and search for the board or name of the board. I'm, I'm typing in V71. It's, that's quite a unique part in the name of the board. And I'll find it in here as this MV7 Explained Pro. On the right-hand side, now I can see that if I get a filtered list of um, software components and device family packs that are compatible with my board or the device on the board. Um, so I installed the SAMV DFP package, and that's the only thing you need to do. It'll bring everything um, that's of concern if you want to program that board. It brings the, the startup codes, it brings the um, hull layers, and the flash algorithm, and so on. So let's go back to Microvision. To start a new project, I'll open project, new microvision project, and browse to a location where I want the project to be stored. I'll call it my server, but you can choose anything you like. And here again, I'll find a list of devices I have to choose from which is now the foundation for everything in my project. So choosing the right device is very important. And I know the device on my board is called V71Q21. I can just read that from the chip. So I'll select that device. Unless you have installed the um, right DFP from the pack installer, you wouldn't find the devices in there. So um, the green, chip indicates that I have the correct package installed. Hit OK. And the next dialog that will open up is the runtime environment manager. So you should have it full screen now. And from there, I will immediately start to select all the components related to the project I want to create. So from the MDK professional networking components, I'll start with the most important thing. I want a web server. And the runtime environment now um, gives me a validation overview about missing components from other packs or um, components it requires to have the web server uh, operating. So what I always can try is to hit resolve. That resolves 
um, those components if possible. Um, and now I have to make a choice on which interface I want to run. And in this case, I want to have it on an Ethernet interface. And I'll select the Mac driver for the V71 because I want to run on the on-chip Ethernet Mac. And I also have to select the correct Phi driver. And as you can see, there's a lot of pre-made drivers available. And the AT61 RNB is the correct um, Phi on board. I can also read that from the board. And uh, continue selecting a memory card interface as I want to have an SD memory card interface for my file system using the memory card interface. And from there, there's many, many other um, dependencies. I will just let them automatically resolve. And one thing that is to mention is for the file system, I can make the choice between using the short file name or the long file name support. In our case, it's very important that we um, use the long file name support as this makes it more handy. It wouldn't restrict the files on our web, the web server file system to the DOS 8.3 uh, mode, but we can use uh, longer file names here. So that's it for the component selection. And as you can see to your project, everything related to the components selected or the components we needed or requested has now been added to the project and is in a managed area on the left hand side beneath the user files. Now we need to add application code. There's also a very handy mechanism that eases that a little bit and um, that's the user code templates that come with various components. The moment you add them to your project, various templates get available. So for our main function, I'll simply select the CMSS Artos main function template and it'll be added to my source group one in that case. I'll also already add the HTTP server CGI module um, we are not going to make any modifications since we are not running a dynamic website, but it's mandatory um, as you will find in the documentation. Documentation is available for every component if you simply right click on it and go to open documentation and that will immediately open the correct documentation. I'll just give you a quick look on that. And as you see, the clicking on that open documentation, open the related documentation, and you'll find all necessary information on how to use a component, use a certain service um, properly explained in here. So let's go back to Microvision and continue doing some necessary configurations. So most components you will see have uh, files with a key symbol, which means we cannot um, make any changes to them. And some others do have, um, are conf uh, configurable. Those are um, files we need to touch uh, for various reasons. And I'm going to start configuring the device hardware uh, or pin configuration using the RTE device header file. In that case, it's pretty simple. Since I only have to enable the Ethernet interface, there's no not many options, simply RMII or MII interface. In our case, it's the RMII interface now and the SDIO interface where we won't use card or write protect pin detections now. So we simply enable them and can save that file and close it. Going um, to the Artos configuration, so um, the middleware components are requiring an Artos kernel and have automatically integrated it now uh, from the runtime and wire management runtime and wire management dialog. Um, I have to do some modifications to the basic Artos configuration, and 
here, the only thing I'm going to do is to increase the main thread stack size where we will later on have our user code to operate the server and initialize the file system and so on. And also we need to make sure that we have the correct core clock frequency configured. So the OS tick is configured to the right interval. Also, um, I'm going to give the system some additional stack and heap in the startup file. This is information I have already collected from the documentation. So the documentation tells me exactly which component has which memory requirements and I simply added that and now know how much system stack I'm going to need, how much um, thread stack and so on. This is basically all the system configurations I have to make and from convenience, I'm going to open the network configuration and give the uh, my system a more unique fi um, um, device name, which uh, makes it discoverable on the network later on. So I'm calling it SAMV70X, like explained. And from there on, now um, we have done all the configuration of components of predefined middleware and so on. And we need to do some, some coding. They're still, still mandatory, but it's, as you will see, quite simple. So it's always a good to, idea to include the device header file. And you can just include header files from components by right-clicking somewhere in the editor where you want to have the include file placed and then select the related header file. And on the right-hand side, you will also see which component provides that header file. So I'm going to add the network header file, and I'm going to add the header file for the file system API. In my main function, um, I will now have to do some system-related settings. First of all, and this is um, something you just have to know, is the watchdog timer will always be enabled on that device. And since we are not servicing it in our application, we really need to disable it. Otherwise, it would just sporadically reset the, the program, and we don't want that. So I'm just disabling it now here directly. Later in your application, you would program it likely and, and service it, but that's a different thing. So. We also do a system core clock update call, which updates the internal um, clock setting from CMS's core. So other related components know the real core clock setting and can adjust accordingly. And there's two new CMS's core functions for the M7, um, which are related to the cache enablement. So you need to enable cache, initialize the cache banks and so on. Those two calls will enable the data and instruction cache. We do this as it increased performance. So that's what we want. Now I can initialize the network stack. That's done by a simple call, net initialize. And also the file system with F in it. And then a specified drive letter. Those are pre-assigned to certain media. So M0 is the first memory card and um, Finit initializes the MCI interface and so on. And for all removable media, we also need to do a mount call. So I'll do F mount is zero. Doing these two, my memory card will now be available um, to the program, to the file system API or to the file API of C. So you could now do an F open and so on. We are not directly programming the file system now. This will be handled by the web server. But uh, in theory, also your application could now access the file system if, you, if required. So all we need to add now is after the system was started by the OS kernel start call, I'll, do, I'll have a thread loop. Main is also always a threat, threat um, a threat as, uh, as a small reminder in our um, CMS's R trust by default, main will continue to run as a threat. So you can immediately use any threat control functions like OS delay. So we are suspending 
that while loop for five milliseconds, um, giving the execution time to another task if some uh, there's waiting tasks. And every now and then we are servicing our network stack by calling the net main function. So from doing all that, I should now be able to compile. The Atmel software framework already, uh, still throws some warnings, so don't be too nervous. Um, I hope this changes in the future. And um, <clears throat> the system validates itself. So the runtime environment um, now notif notifies me that there's an internal component I use that requires the UDP co component. To resolve that problem, I simply go back into the runtime environment manager to the network stack and enable the UDP services. Let's recompile. And we get zero errors. And the next step would be to program the whole thing onto our board. The board brings an onboard um, CMC step adapter. So all I need to do is go to options for target, select the CMC step debugger in the debug tab. I can open settings and as you will see, it already detected the attached board. It shows me the core ID of the Cortex-M7 core on the device. And from the device selection and also the correct on-chip flash algorithm has been selected. So actually all I need to do now is hit the load button and wait the board to flash the, uh, the pro uh, program. and it has finished flash loading. So I'm hitting reset on my board and it should now have started up the software and I'm going to share you a console window in a second. And I'm going to ping the SAM 370 minus X, as I called it. And as you can see, it's replying. So I know my network stack is working fine. And the next step is to use a browser and see if our web server also operates properly. So some V70, V70X. And as you can see, it displays a demo website I have prepared on the memory card already. It's a simple HTML file and two, two images. But I also copied a more complex um, website onto it, which shows you that theoretically also you can create really interesting looking websites. You can make them dynamic using the CGI interface, but that's unfortunately too much for the short time we have in that webinar. And it's simply to give you an idea on the possibilities. So we are getting to the end. Thank you for attending. Everything that you have seen is available now, so you can simply use your MDK, um, download the related device family pack and get started actually. Thank you very much.